What's good? My name is Christian and today we're diving into my top 5 spray painting tips. I'll be sharing with you some things that I keep in mind when I'm painting to have better can control. Stick around to the end to learn about a bonus tip that could be a game changer for your spray painting. To preface, some of the videos you'll see in the background is footage from sort of older paintings and, and some of them are more recent projects, um, just so you can see the evolution of my skills and techniques over time. Before we jump into the tips, this video is sponsored by no one. So check out my website, christianbaches.com. I got some cool works, sticker packs for sale. Consider buying something to help out the channel or checking out my other work. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's kick things off with our first tip. It's all about can handling, which is the way you're holding the spray can. Now this is crucial for precise control. Many beginners think that all you have to do is hold your pointer finger on the cap and you're set, but there's some nuance to it. When you're painting, keep in mind how you're moving your hand. Flaring out and changing the distance from the wall can lead to inconsistent lines and paint distribution. The pro trick is to maintain a controlled grip and pay attention to the way your hand is moving. If you're looking for crisp lines, keep the can parallel to the wall, and when you're moving, keep that same distance throughout. If you're looking for a hard line to fade, hold it at an angle to the wall. If you're just trying to get some specks on the wall and fade it, move back and try flaring your hand just so some particles get on the wall. Now let's discuss the importance of speed in spray painting. Tip 2 highlights how fast or slow you move while painting. I'll demonstrate the difference between slow and fast passes. You'll see how a slow, steady motion results in denser paint coverage. This is good if you're looking for a solid fill or consistent outline. A fast pass delivers lighter, more transparent layers. This can be good for some detail work if you're just looking for a touch of color. It's all about finding the perfect pace for your artistic vision. Most graffiti writers, for example, are fast when they're filling in their pieces just to get some color in there. And they're a lot slower with the outline, so it just gets really punchy and contrasty. For tip three, we're talking about pressure techniques. This is a game changer in can control. I'll introduce you to some low pressure cans and explore various low pressure techniques. When you're starting out, I recommend looking for specific low pressure cans. Some of my favorites are Montana Gold and Montana Colors 94. There's some others as well like Cobra Low, Flame Blue, and Prime Dang Paint. It all depends on where you're from and what cans you can buy in, in your locality. It's important to read that it says low pressure on it. If you happen to get a high pressure can and you want some detailed work, I know two techniques. One is to flip the can over and release some air until it's very low pressure. This is helpful when you have that one color that you want to use for detail, but you don't have it in low pressure. You could even put it in the refrigerator, your can, to make it cold to make it low pressure as well. And the opposite is true. If you want high pressure, you could leave it in the heat, which, you know, isn't necessarily recommended. The amount of pressure you're pressing down with also affects how much paint comes out. If you're looking for a thin, sputtery line, pressing down with just a little bit of force achieves that. You can even hold your finger farther back on the cap to get it lower as well. Of course, the opposite is true in that you can hold the cap down with a lot of force to make the paint come out quicker. This is what I do when filling in pieces like using the, the fat cap, the hardcore fat cap. Tip number four is all about the various caps to use. Your choice of cap matters because it determines the spray pattern and ultimately the look. This is one of the most difficult things to describe over a video because it really depends on your own preferences and what they have at your local graffiti store. I'll show you some of my favorites and what, and what purposes they have. For fills, I love hardcore fats or astro fats. These really get the paint down and get the job done for filling. But because they're so big, you have to sort of slow down when you're spraying to get really clean fills. For fades, I love the blue dot or the pink dot as they're really soft and allow for just really nice fades between colors. I use these for portraits a lot. For outlines, you cannot go wrong with the New York and Lego fat caps. These are really classic and create really crispy lines. For details, I love to either use the Extra Thin by MTN or the Montana Gold Standard Cap. These provide super skinny lines and I'll use them for hair or fur for other detailed marks. I love the shape of these as well and it really allows you to get those really small lines. A bonus cap that I love for multiple purposes, including outlines and fills and stuff, is the banana cap. Think of it like the New York or Lego caps, but it's a lot softer and slower and can be used for fading. Like I said, these are my go-tos, but I highly recommend that you try out the different ones and see what works. For tip number five, I'll emphasize the golden rule of spray painting, practice. 
Spray painting, at least here in the US, is associated with vandalism, so it's a bit difficult to find legal spaces to practice, but it is possible to find them. Firstly, do not paint in your apartment or your house indoors. I cannot stress this enough. It will save your, your lungs and your brain. If you live in a small apartment in New York City, it can be tough to find places. This happened to me during the pandemic when I really wanted to learn how to spray paint. Firstly, I would recommend finding legal walls designated for things like this. Try Freeman's Alley in downtown New York or a street art supply store like all city walls in Harlem. I also went to school in Massachusetts and spent some time there, so I will recommend Artifact Supply in Worcester and Graph City in Beverly, Massachusetts, as they have spaces for people to try out spray painting. Just keep in mind the rules of the street, which is aka don't write all over other people's works in a disrespectful manner and make sure you cover it completely if you are going to cover it, if it is a legal wall. If you're rich and you live in the suburbs, try just setting up a piece of cardboard from the Amazon boxes that your mom buys and put it along a wall or surface that you covered with cardboard. This ensures that you're painting upright and lets you practice without your parents getting mad that you got paint on the shed. If you're really struggling, there are other locations you could find out about online or through locals where you could just practice, but we won't get into that in this video. And here's the bonus tip that could take your art to the next level, funding your artistic journey. When I started out, paying $7 a can was like crazy to me. Sometimes it was either, it was even nine or $10. Like to paint a portrait was at least 80 with all the colors that you need. If you don't have your dad's credit card ready to use, I recommend looking for local grants. Again, I went to school in Worcester, Massachusetts, and there was a local council called the Worcester Arts Council. From finding them online, I learned about the free money that they give away to artists who are looking to pay for supplies that will support the local culture. I applied for three different projects throughout a couple years and have collected a number of cans from those. I also recommend looking at grants through schools, which I did as well, or try convincing business owners with walls to let you paint on their walls for some cash to pay for some cans. It's definitely a lot of work and a struggle to be able to afford and get cans, but if you're serious about trying it out, the work you have to put in is definitely worth it. So there you have it, my comprehensive guide to mastering can control and spray painting. We've covered can handling, speed control, pressure techniques, cap selection, and the importance of practice. And don't forget to explore opportunities for funding your art. If you ever have any questions, hit me up on Instagram at Art or in the comments of this video. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. And now we're at the end of this video and I wanted to say thank you for watching and making it to the end. I appreciate you and happy spray painting.